everyone, welcome to another episode of Joy of Puzzles. I have for you today another in the Thomas Kincaid collection, known as Chandler's Cottage. This was published in 2005 by CEACO. Uh, I've had this puzzle for quite some time, though frankly I don't recall making it, but that doesn't matter. Uh, the company, CEACO, was established in 1987 in Massachusetts, and that is basically all the information they have provided on their website. So, not able to track down any other details. Fairly certain they have a retail store along with their uh, publishing factory, but I think they outsource some of that to China. This one's older though, this is a 2005 one, so this one was made in the USA, and it's made from recycled material. The artist, Thomas Kincaid, he's also known as the Painter of Light, he is pretty prolific. He has a huge collection of art. His website is uh, pretty amazing. In my part of the country, he's also, his name is synonymous with home decor, um, you know, for, it, and all sorts of retailers, they sell Thomas Kincaid paintings for, for folks to, to hang. Uh, and you can buy directly from the site. Though this one is sold out, this was a limited edition that he created in 1990. I was a bit curious about the name, I can't help but when I hear Chandler think of friends, I mean I'm sure there's zero connection, especially when I read the description underneath that it implies this was painted for one of his children as the idealized type of cottage um, for, I don't know, he went on to talk about gingerbread houses and some sort of something along those lines. So this was created for one of his children. This is a thousand piece puzzle and it took nine and a half hours to make. Strategy wise, I started with the border, uh, which is pretty normal, but I find that puzzles based on paintings and uh, that type of art is inherently more difficult. The color blends and trans transitions are not as crisp as photographs, so there's a lot of ambiguity in an individual piece when you look at it as far as its orientation, where it might go in the puzzle, because there, uh, you know, paint is paint. When you when you zoom in, you know, I guess it's like looking at a Monet. If you ever looked at one of those, that from afar, yeah, it's a clear image, but. When you zoom into the individual pieces, it's a little more challenging. And I find, while this is no Monet, it does represent and have presented those same type of difficulties when you're that zoomed in on the individual piece. So, all that being said, strategy-wise, what to do? Well, the obvious thing here were the windows, the bright, glowing, lit panes of glass, and then I opted to work with the flowers. They're vibrant in color, they were kind of centralized, and I did all of them except the white flowers with the little yellow centers. I found those to be kind of scattered, and those white pieces, sometimes it was tough to tell if that was part of the cottage wall or if it was a flower, so I held off doing those. Well, after I finished the windows and most of the flowers, I started looking at the transition from the sky to the rest of the portrait. Uh, I ended up doing the rose arch and then working on the rooftop of the cottage. Again, that transition is an important little strategy point. That's how you create these quadrants of the puzzle where you define sections of it, places you want to work. But I did find that the roof pieces, that slate gray and the white walls of the cottage, had a lot in common with the walkway. There were some distinctions, but I, so I ended up pulling all those pieces and building them together, uh, you know, in, in one fell swoop. Well, after the cottage was done and the walls were done, I finished the rest of the foliage before going to the sky. Well. It was a slog, it was a grind, it was a hunt and peck, and I know it would be, right? I picked these puzzles on purpose, it's not a surprise. Uh, there was a, a fair 
distinction in hue between the lightest part of the sky and the darkest part of the sky. So I ended up working my way inward, flip-flopping between strategies. I occasionally would focus on the darkest pieces, and when they started to blend and were not as distinct, I worked on the pieces that were the brightest white color and worked my way outward until eventually those portions all meet. And yeah, but in the end I did have to hunt and peck by shape which is my least favorite type of puzzle build, but that's okay, there wasn't much of it. It was probably the last 50 pieces or so that forced me to do that, so not so bad. All right, let's review the puzzle. I'm gonna review the puzzle in four distinct categories on a scale of one to five. The first category is the puzzle material quality itself, the paperboard and how well the image is bonded to it. Having built this puzzle previously in 2005, um, the pieces were a little damaged. Uh, I think that this is a recycled material. Uh, the last couple puzzles that I've built from this brand, in particular the Thomas Kincaid ones, have been of superior quality. This one is only average, and it may be indicative of what they were doing at the time back in 2005. It was a long time ago, right? And the puzzle's been around. I've probably built it more than once, or family members have built it, so there was some damage to the pieces. Not significant, but I'm still only going to give it a 3 as an average score. The next category is the puzzle cut quality in the piece design. I'm going to give this a 3 as well, also below the average as far as this brand goes. Again, perfectly average, 3 out of 5, but based on the history of my experience with these it is slightly below average. The piece design was very traditional. I did find that I could fit pieces where they didn't belong, but no no excessive amount. Um, you, you'll notice if you look closely once in a while, like the border kind of just falls apart on me here and there. And that's indicative of the cut quality. The third category is the difficulty of the puzzle. I consider 8 hours an average build time for a thousand piece puzzle. This one was 9.5 hours, so I'm going to give this a slightly higher than average build time, I mean uh, difficulty rating of 4. And a lot of that actually came down to the end. I think I had to do that last sky piece, I don't know, I did it in maybe 3 sittings of like an hour each, so out of that 9.5 hours, 3 of it is dedicated to the smallest portion of the puzzle. It might even have been more than three hours. So the, the, that time is not as enjoyable as the rest of the puzzle, but, you know, those of us who build puzzles for <laughs> as a hobby, we expect these kind of things. But I'm still going to give it a four difficulty. The fourth category, and by far the most subjective, is frameability. If I was the type of person that would build a puzzle only once and keep it forever and hang it on my wall, would this make the list? Well, it's above average. This is a four. This is legitimate hang in a museum kind of artwork. Um, I'm giving it a four instead of a five. Again, <laughs> purely subjective. I have looked at a lot of his art and I have several of his puzzles, more to come. This simply isn't my favorite. Uh, so I will mark it down one notch. Uh, <laughs> I get really subjective. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't anyone be mad at me about that. Overall score. Not quite a linear thing, though the first two categories weighed heaviest for me. I'm going to give this an overall score of a 3. Again, uh, slightly below for this brand name and this design, but the material quality and the cut quality being average drives the build to be average. I will build this again. I've built it before. Uh, this is one I would loan out, and I know it's enjoyable, though whoever borrows it from me may not enjoy that last little stretch in the in the clouds there. Alright, that's it for the review. At the end here, you'll see me take the border pieces, put them in a little plastic baggie. That will just save me 20 minutes next time I go to build this puzzle for whomever I give it to. And then you'll see me put the rest of the pieces in a big plastic bag. That's just so if this box falls, and it falls amongst the countless puzzles I seem to own, I wouldn't want the pieces to scatter all over the place. If you liked the video, go ahead and click the like button. You know, 
maybe even share it with some friends. I appreciate all of everyone out there who takes 10 minutes out of a day to watch one of these things. And I look forward to bringing you more puzzle videos in the very near future. Thanks again, everyone. Bye.